I, I feel like it it's made me feel that I've explored life you know and, yeah. and lived a lot of, I mean I've done that many things in my life that when I explain to people I've done this and that and I feel like I've lived a million lives but I love all of the bits you know yes yeah, some bits mm-hmm. obviously are not so good but I wouldn't change that I tried things and it didn't work out or I just love that I tried. Welcome to the Permission to Heal podcast. I am Marcy Brockman. Together, we will discover what brings us healing, meaning, and true joy. You only need your own permission to begin. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Permission to Heal. I am Marcy Brockman, and I am really thrilled that you are here. This is the last season This is the last episode of the second season of Permission to Heal. I am, after this episode, taking a six to eight week hiatus. Um, You all know that I am um, in the throes of breast cancer and treatment and surgery and recuperation and all of that. So I am clearing my life out so that I can focus during that time solely on healing and peace and rest, self-care, self-compassion, self-love. Okay, so that being said, this episode 90 of Permission to Heal, my guest is Rachel Taylor. Rachel is an award-winning art director, a creative mentor, and print and pattern designer. She is best known for her quirky style, her daring use of color, and her unique innovation. She regularly takes on design commissions for various companies and has created prints and patterns for almost every part of the marketplace. She is a trademarked brand with a number of licensed products worldwide. Rachel is also a much loved coach and creative mentor who is well known for her friendly, honest, and motivational teaching style. As the co-founder of Make It In Design, she has developed a groundbreaking educational platform and has taught more than 25,000 students across 100 countries. Rachel has been featured in many print and online publications, including House Beautiful, Red, Molly Makes, and Homestyle, and on ITV, the BBC, and Channel 4. She is also a member of the UK government's Anti-Copying in Design Sector Council and a regular speaker for design industry events. Um, You can follow Rachel on Instagram and on Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest and LinkedIn and all of her socials and all of her links and her website and all of it will be in the show notes. You can just scroll down. Um, What I find so amazing about Rachel and the book that she has written that is coming out, I believe the publication date in the United States is November 8th and a couple of months later in the UK. Um, Her book is called Power Up Your Creativity, Ignite Your Creative Spark, Develop a Productive Practice, Set Goals and Achieve Your Dreams. And the reason that I had her on the show is because the way that she frames creativity and visual art, design, artistry, whatever, the creation of visual art, it doesn't require what we think of as artistic talent. It just requires you to be present with yourself, to try to get in touch with your inner authenticity and your heart and have a pencil and a piece of paper and maybe a drink, you know, iced tea, Long Island iced tea, whatever. Um, Because so much of my own healing journey has been manifested and urged along through almost 40 years of keeping journals and really 51 years of creativity. I remember very specifically having design ideas or drawing ideas when I was three in nursery school and using the power of verbal and visual art has really allowed me to get in touch with all of my feelings and manifest for myself what my own values are and what I want out of life and 
get to know myself and learn how to try things without being afraid to fail, without being afraid of, you know, oh my God, it's not perfect. Or what if it comes out badly? You just start over again, you know? Um, you don't have to have a degree in art to be an artist, you know? And her book is visually, aesthetically gorgeous. And there are so many quotes, so many things that she says in her book that are so in line with the mission and the values of this podcast and of my life and of my own book, Permission to Land. Um, here she says, give yourself permission to pause, reflect, and be free. It's your journey. Follow your weird. If we dream small, we act small. Um, use your emotions to fuel your creativity. Remember that growth can be uncomfortable and painful, but it's also necessary and beautiful and is a process. Be as kind to yourself as you are to others. Asking for help and, and getting rest is, not pow is power, not weakness. You are your only limit. Give yourself the creative freedom to bloom and know that you can create anything you put your mind to. All of these came right out of her book. And I would challenge any of you to find a single episode of this podcast where these ideas are not present. This is everything that I have been talking about. And it's just taking on a visual art form. Um, and so I hope that you go buy yourself a box of crayons or colored pencils or magic markers and get a sketch pad or a coloring book or something and just draw, paint, color, create something that speaks to the mood that you're in, to the, the color palette of your emotions um, and your spirit. It's fun. Allow yourself the freedom to create and be creative. And even if you do it in secret, even if you do it for your own, only your own enjoyment and keep it away from other people, you know, there's no, no reason you have to share it with the world, but you can, if you want to, I would love to see what you create. So listen to yourself. Don't be afraid. Go boldly into color and into new things and See what happens. Well, thank you for having me and hello. <laughs> hello, hello, Rachel. So lovely to meet you. And I, um, I had been looking forward to this conversation because I, I got a copy of your book from your publicist. It's not quite out in the United States yet or in the UK, but um, it's so great. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's almost time for release day and I'm kind of 
excited but kind of super nervous as well but really excited mostly <laughs> it's just beautiful thank to you look at the 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 the, the, oh, the colors the pictures the photographs the 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 placement of everything it's 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 power up your creativity but it is such an aesthetically pleasing book that even just to look at it is inspiring like i want to like take out my paint and start painting oh, again. i got a little emotional when you said that i should have done my spinal thank you i literally poured my heart and soul into everything not just the words but the whole kind of creative vision from the beginning yeah. through to how it was marketed a big shout out to my assistant um kelly crossley who um helps at the studio she's my studio manager and she assisted with with the design of the book also and we I think and also really grateful to my publisher for just allowing me to like inject me into everything and trust in my kind of vision for it and, and they really allowed us to do that and there was a lot of effort and you know it was a real yeah it was just it was just it just felt really natural and organic but a heck of a lot of hard work at the same time <laughs> absolutely absolutely yeah. so so you have a a platform called make it in make it in design right yeah what, would you tell me, tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so we are a online design school, and um, the first focusing on surface pattern design. We've been running now, gosh, almost eleven years. So wow. you know, way back when no one was really doing online courses, and particularly design courses. Anyway, we were you know one of the first out there, and um, it's just kind of exploded over the years. So myself and my fellow business part and uh, my business partner Beth Kempton who's also a great writer by the way we joined forces and she kind of approached me about you know this kind of e-course concept mm -hmm. and then when we got our heads together we were like there's a gap in the market there should be more than one course and then when we did one course and it did well we got industry people interested word of mouth people saying great things students going on to do great things and it's just grown you know so we've got multiple courses now we did start out very surface pattern design focused because that is initially my specialism, but over the years I've really gone multidisciplinary, I'd say. But now we work with a team of experts, you know, from all around the world with different specialisms. We have like a summer school, winter school, like a members club. We do free things as well, like a podcast, you know, free courses. And yeah, we've just got this amazing community, which has opened up a lot of doors for me. And I think with that business, one thing that just kind of makes my head explode every day is that we reach people in a hundred countries. Yeah, um, I was reading that tw more than 25,000 yeah, and, and, students and, in a hundred countries. Yeah. And sometimes wow. I think, you know, um, I, I definitely speak slower when I teach and we do, you know, professional videos and things, but, um, I, I do have a Liverpool accent. Um, so I, I think all oh, these people follow me, but they get transcripts and things as well. But, it's just amazing that we we reach all of these people like really cool interesting people and that's why I love like different cultures and communities coming together and just it's just a lovely place to be and I know when I was like graduating or stepping into the industry there was just none of this and the design industry can feel quite competitive and quite lonely as well and it just feels really inclusive and encouraging and supportive and I've grown, you know, as a creative because of this community. Like the book is was definitely born because of the ideas and the conversations with with all these amazing people. Yeah, and it's just uh, it is something I'm I'm really proud of. But again, you know, I, I big shout out to the 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 team that I work with. We are small, but I definitely think we are mighty, and we do really cool things. And there's just a number of individuals who you know really do sprinkle the magic on everything and and, and put as much effort in as me and Beth did in the beginning and. Yeah, so grateful. So that's it in the kind of long and short version, I suppose. But yeah, I love it. That's awesome. And so the book is obviously an outgrowth of all of that. And all of yeah. the links for those of you who are listening, all the links to Make It In Design and everything that is Rachel Taylor will be in the show notes. So you can just scroll down if you're not driving and take a look. But um, I want to talk to you about like, what compels you as an artist? You know, how do you... You, you know, you said something in the intro of your book. It says, give yourself permission to pause, reflect, and be free because it's your journey. And mm -hmm. that is like so much in line with the mission of this podcast. Right. And I know that one of the ways that I've 
I don't want to say healed myself, but mm -hmm. taken myself because that's all that'll never be done. But taken myself along my own healing journey is through creativity and through art. And th I've been keeping journals since 1983 and drawing and painting pretty much all that time. Well, since I was three years old and in my mid 40s, after my divorce, I set up an art studio in my house. This is where we are now, you know, it's become the center of my, my heart of my home. And I really think that I learned a lot about myself and reprioritized my own values through painting, mm -hmm. through the release of that creativity. And, and I just thought maybe you would speak to that about your own process and, and so on. Uh, yeah, I love that you picked up on that. And I love that you've kept journals for, for that long a time. Almost 40 years. Which yeah, is amazing. Crazy. Oh, wow. I, I, I love that. Yeah, I think just knowing when to pause and reflect and kind of put the brakes on things is, is really important. And to have that time to nurture your, your creativity. And I often think over the years, you know, working in the design industry, I felt that I had to go at a fast pace or I've had to do things because that person's doing it or this other person's doing this and I, I feel like at times I was doing things as much as I enjoyed it because I felt like I was ticking boxes and I think when I mm -hmm. really thought about what is it that makes me happy and how I how I just find to find success for me personally it doesn't have to be what everyone else is doing of course and I slowed down and listened and, and paused and reflected that's when things just kind of clicked into place and I think that's when I stopped trying to kind of just dis not disguise who I was I, wouldn't, I think I've always been very open and who, who and who I am but I definitely held back and and felt a little bit embarrassed or ashamed of things that you know I wasn't perfect at or and when I just kind of slowed down and trust the process a little bit more and also left room for spontaneity and freedom mm -hmm. I think kind of like I my authentic self came across more and that confidence came and um, so I've gone off on a tangent there with this answer, but but um, yeah, I just think you know, um, trust in that process and and just you know, really thinking about what it is that I want from from life and my creativity, and not feeling like I have to do what everyone else is doing it was a big big thing for me. Um, does that freedom and your uniqueness and your colorful like love of color that obviously comes across in this book does that translate to other facets of your life oh yes definitely so um I was restricted at one point with color within the design industry for a few companies I worked with and I think then I, I rebelled and got the color back I would say I've always loved color but um a couple of things like um in the UK in the winter in the gray weather I suffer really suffer with seasonal affective disorder so it really to the point where I can have days where I don't want to go out of the house and it's cold and it's wet and it's gray. And, and so I love color for that. So I've always had wardrobes that are colorful or had my home colorful. I'm renovating a house again. And it's that thing of I want people to come in and be surprised or feel like they're on holiday or that kind of feel good that big feel good vibe. Um, I drive a little pink car. <laughs> I don't I drive a purple that. one. Yeah, oh, I love that. I am, um, you know, in the UK, no one has colorful cars. Um, I fell in love with like travel and places like Cuba that have really influenced my work. And I just, yeah, I love color and the, the energy it gives. Like if I'm surrounded by yellow or orange, I'm just instantly lifted. And mm -hmm. I, I just want that vibrancy and energy to come across in everything that I do. And and I think, yeah, in my life, I'm colorful try to call a car live in a colorful house I think I have that kind of warm energetic personality don't get me wrong there are days when you know I'm not feeling like that but generally of that's, course we all that's, have gray days yeah that that's who I am and um yeah I just I, I just love color and how it makes me feel and um you know dressing for the joy of it and as I've got old to just wearing what I want and not worrying about things quite so much and yeah, and I think with you know even with my little boy, we we try to embrace the fun and silliness in life a lot, and um yeah, really cherish little things like that, and um we love to paint and make things, and 
you know, just collect unusual things. And I, I, my house is full of random items, but I love things that kind of evoke a story or emotion or, yeah, give a boost of colour. So, yeah, it definitely floods into to everything that I do. So as you became more confident as an artist, do you think you became more confident as a woman and as a mom? Yeah, yeah definitely. I, I think when I, you know, reflected upon what is it that I really wanted, it made me identify what is it I want from life and um yeah as a, as a as a woman I know you mentioned um separation things so I I'm like a divorced late lady and you know I'm confident with that I'm okay and I've gone through big life changes and I think just knowing that you know I really defined one area in my life is in my career and my confidence and artist did give me that thing well I can do this too you know and and also, you know, um, being a mum as well, I definitely think it, it's given me more confidence. But I love the fact that, particularly in the, in recent years, I've really focused around having freedom in life and work. And, you know, yes, I want success, but th my definition of success is having freedom as well, as having the flexibility to work at yes, night. Absolutely. Or if I can around the school holiday or, you know, around my little boy. And sometimes I work really long hours, sometimes short hours. And I think that's given me confidence, you know, as a mom as well. And just, yeah, just, you know, embracing that not everything is perfect. You know, there's, I, I'm, I'm not the best cook or baker or anything, but that's okay. I can, I can do great art with my son. So, exactly. you know, so yeah. So, you know, I'm still learning and, and, and trying to improve always, but I think just knowing that I've achieved different, you know, done difficult things and achieved things that I totally didn't expect I could ever do that I would think oh my gosh there's no way I could do public speaking or write for a magazine or something or even write a book it's right. just making me think actually I can do the hard stuff you know and to trust myself a little bit more because I have had phases of, of self-doubt and worry and, and and now I just have to think gosh you have done these things you know yeah absolutely you can reflect back on them you know the next time you're feeling a little bit of self-doubt well you know I have students in a hundred damn countries, you know, <laughs> I just yeah. wrote a book. When know? people say that to me, I'm like, oh, wow, that's me. I, yeah. Sometimes you don't realize that's what you've done. It's kind of like, exactly. you do all these things and you, obviously you're grateful for them, but it's, it's when someone writes it about your bio, you're like, oh, that's actually me on that page. Wow. <laughs> exactly. I don't, yeah. I don't exactly. feel grown up enough sometimes to have these things written about me. I'm like, oh yeah. Oh, that's totally normal. I think I, I think <laughs> all adults feel that way I, I i've come to realize that my body is aging and obviously my brain and my spirituality and yeah. all that stuff is maturing but mostly i i feel like a big kid in an older body yeah. you know like yeah, i feel funny. like i'm still 32 not 54 you know like well, you don't look 54 whatever oh. you're doing keep doing it because <laughs> you're thank you. young <laughs> you look good thank you thank you, thank you. um I, you know what i i love like, listening to you uh reminds me of all of all of the different segments of your book when i was looking through it and reading it i jotted down all sorts of quotes and all sorts of things from each little segment and and i can see how very much this book is you oh good you know you start with follow your weird you know <laughs> if, if we dream small we act small yeah um, how can we uh you talk about vision boards and do i need to evolve yes and growth can be com uncomfortable and painful but also necessary and beautiful and it's a process mm -hmm. you know you talk about collaboration um you, you talked about journaling, be as kind to yourself as you are to other people. I mean, self-compassion is everything. Yeah. It's a thing I'm still learning now. Um, and asking for help combats isolation and getting help. What did you say? Getting help and rest are power, not weakness. Yeah, definitely. It took me that a long time. That is a mic time. drop moment right there. Yeah, it took me a long time to realize that. And then, you know, after... There was some tough years when burn out or feeling like a shame needing help or admitting I was struggling with something and then realizing that I was just draining myself and I should be focusing on the bits that I'm good at that I know I can give energy to and 
yeah, just recognizing that it, it's we wear that busy badge of honor so much sometimes, and, yeah. and recognizing that we can still be super productive whilst we're looking after ourselves, you know? Absolutely. And, and that's a big thing I try to strive for now. But easier said than done sometimes. But yeah, yeah it, it's been a big thing. Yeah. Of course, there are going to be days where all you do is is catch fly balls. You know, yeah. all you're doing is fielding all the stuff coming at you and you've got no time for yourself that's just normal but i think over over the big picture over the long haul if you have to i i should practice what i preach here rachel you know <laughs> <laughs> i'm just like learning how to unwind things from my childhood that keep me from taking care of myself yeah um i don't really think that i've done the best job that i could do and and that's changing you know, I haven't done the best job that I could do yet. Yeah. Right? right. Yeah. Um, so especially women, especially moms, I think that the, the society just tries to tell us that, yes, we can have it all and we can have it all at the same time and that mm -hmm. we can do everything and we have to do everything in order to save face, in order to yeah. be respectable or whatever the, the, the thing is. And it's not true. Okay, so changing tax a little bit. What is a vision board? So a vision board is a way to document what it is that you want. So I'm a big fan of encouraging people to do like a professional one and a personal one. Because I think often we get so focused on like the work goals because I think they should, you know, feed into each other. Mm -hmm. So you can do it by, you know, scrapbooking, magazine images, photographs, things that you like, keywords, you know. Your personal one, for me, I love travel, you know, things with my family, friends, music, going to live events, obviously creativity, nature, all of that. Um, you know, there might be kind of key words on there, like spontaneity, freedom, um, countries I want to visit. Mm -hmm. And then I'm often, like I said, a fan of doing the two. So then my work one, it might be, you know, want to do a children's book collection, a fashion line, make time to paint, that type of thing, um, you know, workshops. But visually um creating a, a board whether it's digitally or like a scrapbook um, and having them around you or a place you can look at them often just really does excite you and motivate you and I am all for kind of manifesting things and and you know it, it's really helped me over the years you know thinking of wanting something and believing in it and really visualizing it coming to life and it's happened I was doing like a shoot for, for a magazine and I was only down for like a few pages and I really before the shoot was like I'm, I'm gonna ask the photographer to do some shots for the cover and it was such a big like ambitious thing to think I'm gonna get on the cover I don't know why I just got this feeling like this intuitive feeling that right you need to take these photos and I was so clear in my head and I kind of closed my eyes and, and pictured what this cover would like so I set up the shot like that mm -hmm. and made my um um photographer say it out loud that we were going to get the cover and Kelly who works at the studio and and then basically it happened and that cover happened and then I got a 10 page article and there's wow. just been, like yeah there's just been things like that where I get this little kind of intuitive feeling or a, a shiver down my spine of something that you are meant to do this and and sometimes it doesn't happen at the time it can be delayed or it, it comes to life a little bit later or in an indirect way but I, I think because I've seen the power of manifesting things absolutely um, I, I truly believe in it and um, the vision boards are just a great tool for that and I also think a vision board is great for thinking about what it is we want I think I'm a lot really of us clear on that yeah yeah I think a lot of us actually don't give ourselves time to think about what we want or we think it's like arrogant or greedy to ask for certain things or I can't possibly travel because I'm a mom or I can't possibly think I want this car because I only bought this car for you or you know whatever it is that it is that you're wanting to to do for you um and I think we think you know by showing it to people or or getting these images like oh this is unrealistic it's not going to happen but it's such a fun thing to do. It lets you think about what it is you want and actually make you realize that it's it's more achievable and um, allows you to have visual aid for manifestation. And um, it's just a, you know, a great thing to have to keep your energy, like on those days when you might be feeling a bit rubbish and you're starting off a business maybe and working long hours or the house is messy and you're running late for the school drop off and thinking like, oh, why am I doing all these things and doing this to myself? And sure. 
and, and then it just yeah it just kind of really fuels you so it's, it's a big thing that I encourage with a lot of people I teach and mentor and, and I know it helps a lot of people and it's easy to do I mean if exactly you, you yeah just collage with things that you that, yeah. that appeal to you that that resonate with you images words like you yeah. said colors could be paint swatches you know whatever definitely but you get a good vibe with that that means something to you and then I think it's cool I, I've actually tried that on a smaller on a small scale um but I I've got some big thick big canvases that are paintings that I'm going to eventually paint over but I think I'm going to do a vision board on top oh of. that would be amazing and yeah be fun and I think having clarity, I mean, one of the big things in the book is is having clarity and what it is that you, you want and, um, you know, and knowing where you want to be. You can be in a certain place now, but knowing what the ultimate big, big goal is. And then it's just a case of that's where I want to be. This is where I am now. And identifying what it is you need to get there. And it, it's more achievable than you think. And a lot of people have this big dream that is, Oh, they think, oh my goodness, this is so out of reach. But actually it isn't. When you get clarity in what you want and then identify the steps to get you there, you yeah. will do it. You can create anything you put your mind to. That's from Definitely. Mind. <laughs> okay, here's another one. How can we use our emotions to fuel our creativity? We well, definitely can. And I, I've learned this over the years, you know, um, I... I most of the time I create my better work when I am feeling joyful and upbeat. However, you know, when we're having those bad days, they can they can also feed into our creativity in a different way and allow us to explore maybe a different piece of work or a, a different color palette. But I honestly believe, you know, with like the ebbs and flows in life that, you know, we, we're happy or we're sad. And um, if we have to feel those things, because if we were super, super happy all of the time, we, we wouldn't appreciate it. I don't think that raw emotion would come across. So I try to explore all of the feelings and I would say, you know, feel all the feels and, and use creativity, you know, to comfort you in a bad time. If you feel up to it, sometimes, you know, we don't want to do that. We just want to sit on the sofa and watch Netflix or whatever, you know, you right. know, whatever works for you. Um, and then, you know, the same if you're good, you know, pouring that energy into your work. But I think um, our emotions can really fuel us trying different things or maybe when we're feeling a little frustrated, just being spontaneous and grabbing the paints and expressing ourselves. And actually, that piece might be brilliant. And you might think, oh, my gosh, I would never have done that if I wasn't in a bad mood this evening. Or, right. you know, I've done it where I've kind of... Um, been frustrated with a design file and knock something and it's gone a bit weird and I've been like oh I don't know about this and then the next day I'm like actually that's really good that layer is really nice and I might use that on something so I think you know um, creativity and exploring our emotions just go hand in hand and um, they complement each other and um, yeah it's something you know that can, can feed into everything that we do. Now what do you say to people who say they want to try to to be artistic or they want to try to create something but that they don't feel like they have any talent like I can't draw I've never painted yeah. anything in my life I you know I can't do this what do you say to them I honestly I get this a lot and I would say firstly try not to say to yourself I can't I know it's easier said than done and we all say I can't draw I can't do this also if you're saying you can't draw yes I'm from an artistic background and I can paint and draw realistic but if you look at my design style my prints and patterns the very of uh, you know doodly innocent kind of naive um, drawings that are Whimsical. developed yeah so you know yes I have an art um, background however if you look at my sketchbook drawings you wouldn't think oh she's got a design degree in this or can paint painted like this because I don't want to do that thing anymore I'm very into the doodle kind of style and and all of that and I've you know got all of these things on best-selling licensed ranges and collections and stuff so you can draw everyone can draw it's finding you know the style that suits you mm -hmm. we all draw differently and you know if, if you're someone who struggles with um, realistic kind of style drawing why not go abstract or why not use procreate and work in a graphic style you know or mm -hmm. same with painting um if you're not sure what to paint you could start with abstract pieces using colors that you like maybe it's textures spots and stripes 
a piece of wall art for your home. I would say the main thing is is to get going. Try not to compare yourself to others and think, oh, you know, I'm creating a print today that I might um, screen print on fabric, but I'm looking at print designers out there and I'm not them. Yeah, you are not them and they've been doing it for years, but they were also once a beginner. And if that artist hadn't put their pen to paper or paintbrush to his canvas, that they, they wouldn't be where they are today. And I've honestly got students in our community who are retrained. You know, we've, we've got people who maybe had an interest in the arts with no art training, who are, say, an accountant who took the courses and then have gone on to be, like, amazing licensed artists, you know, or working for great, really cool companies. So you can do it. You just have to start and kind of um, drown out those voices and... Mm -hmm any negativity and just get going and create and a lot of people um who I teach are nervous of color because I'm like so confident with color but I honestly say well it's just color you know what's the worst that can happen if you don't like the color you can change it or repaint it or change the color right. on your wall or and if color is something you struggle with why not grab your favorite scarf or dress out of your wardrobe and use that for inspiration and um, you know I, I think creativity is such a gift and a blessing and we should enjoy it and have fun you know it's, it's an important thing that we do but I'm not doing kind of like open heart surgery or something like that so I think you know it, it's creativity it should be fun and that's why I always remind myself when I'm getting stressed with like a creative deadline I think gosh you're creative like stop worrying like you should be enjoying this you know and and I think just just go for it and you know I, I sometimes I think people think I'm super super confident but I've always had the thing of what's the worst that can happen you know it's it's yes it's, I say that like not, not that I want to dwell on what the worst that can happen is but it's like if you know what so what if it doesn't work out doesn't matter next thing and I try and where possible have that approach easier said than done sometimes but it's like if I get a no or it doesn't work out big deal I'll kind of move on you know and then just go to the next thing so I've tried to have that mentality over the years and encourage people to just just go for it because you just never know what's going to happen. And, and I think creativity is a gift and you've got to explore it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, I see things all around me that inspire me to try something. And I'm always like ripping things out of magazines or taking pictures of things with my iPhone and just saving them for a rainy day when I need a little inspiration. But there are so many paintings that I have started like, oh, I want to try that. And I'm like, oh, no, I don't like that. You know, and mm -hmm. so you whitewash it and start over again. Definitely. And I think, I think trying things feeds into other things. So even if something doesn't work out, that's a, you know, you experimenting that will lead you on to another idea as well. And that's what I love. Yeah. I mean, that's how I figured out. I, I paint mostly or exclusively at this point in acrylics. And I I was, I do mostly landscapes and, 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 um, and abstracts. And I've been doing, like you see behind me, some neurogenic art lately, which I find very meditative and, and super relaxing. But there was a time, a couple, a bunch of years ago, where I was trying to blend color and I couldn't figure out how to get the color to transition from one, from a deep intensity to a lighter intensity into another. A anyway, long story short was that I was just playing around with things that I had in my house. Like, how do I dilute this in a way that gives me the effect that I want? And so I mixed it with water. I didn't like it. I mixed it with nail polish remover. That didn't work at all. And then I found rubbing alcohol, like plain oh, old wow. medical rubbing <laughs> alcohol. And if I put that on my brush and sort of flisk it you know uh, uh dance it over the top of the, the paint it did exactly the blending that i wanted and immediately evaporated before it could run so it was just like a science experiment like what can i mix with the paint to have it do what i want without actually having to leave my house and and i just discovered this technique that i love using you know and it was cheap and easy <laughs> I love that. I, I love the, the painting behind you and all of the colors, of course. It's gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Thank really you. nice. I, I started this a bunch of years ago. One of the art teachers, I teach high school English by day. And one of the art teachers in my high school knew that I was a painter and, and so on. And she said that I should try neurographic art. And I had never heard of it before. She sent me on a, to a YouTube video and I was hooked, hooked, hooked. <laughs> It's just easy and meditative. Anybody can do it. I teach my 
uh, high school English students, they come to English class a couple of times a year and we do art for a couple That's days. amazing. I love that. You know, I mean, it's another way to express yourself. That's all. We're just, yeah, it's just amazing. So hmm, you never know. You never know. Yeah, I love exploring experiments and I think it's just so key and you just, just have to do these things, definitely. Yeah, put some new piece of music on or have a little wine or something else that relaxes you and yeah. and just go to it. You know, like you said, what's the worst going to happen? The earth isn't going to swallow you up. Nobody's going to laugh at you. And if you don't like what you've created, trash it and do something else, you know? Yeah, yeah, and you never know, you might uncover like a new talent or fall in love with what you do. And yeah, I just think have fun with creativity because we can. Yeah, absolutely. And it helps you hear and slow down to get in touch with your authentic mm -hmm. self, I think. Definitely. You know, for me, it taught me patience because you can't paint too much at once or it turns mm -hmm. to mud. Yeah. You know, you've got to take it slowly and let it evolve. You can't rush the process. And there's so much of the, the logic of creating visual art that translated or translates directly into peaceful living, I think. Yeah, definitely. I agree. Beautiful. Okay, so each interview, we, um, each episode, we end with the six quick questions, seven quick questions. Sorry, are you ready? Ready. <laughs> okay. What six words would you use to describe yourself? Oh, energetic, creative, silly, um, humorous, oh, emotional, and playful. Is that six? <laughs> I think so. That's good. It's a great list. What's your favorite way to spend a day? Out, outside in nature, um, eating nice foods, a little exercise, gardening, friends and family, and kind of lots of cuddles. Lots of cuddles. What is your son? <laughs> he's eight. Oh, so he still cuddles mom. Yeah, he does. He's a real cuddler. And I'm just really aware of that, you know, this. he holds my hand on the way to school. And I'm just like, oh you know I don't want this to stop so I'm just yeah. really cherishing that at the moment oh please do yeah it goes by too quickly yeah and he's gone so big he's really tall so I'm already I'm like oh my goodness you know mm -hmm. his socks and things fit me <laughs> yeah so right. I'm cherishing all of, all, of, all of that at the moment excellent yeah my son is 24 and he's six foot three and lives in another state and yeah <laughs> I, I would love, 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 love to have my kids be like yeah. three and six for another week. Yeah, that's it. Just to really appreciate you get that. <sighs> it was so great. Um, what's your favorite childhood memory? I think um, performing as a child. I love dance, drama, and just, you know, getting up on stage, doing shows, expressing myself. I wasn't always the best, but I loved it. And um, just... All that counts. I, yeah, just just being able to be creative and express myself. And I think my mom just always given me the freedom to try different things. You know, I'm, I'm that type of person that is one week horse riding, the next week dancing, the next week. Mm -hmm. I, I love trying things. And it's always to do with like, mainly to do with creativity. And um, yeah, that kind of thing. That's great. That's great. That's a good way of looking at it. You know, like I, I did a whole lot of things too. And mm -hmm. flitted around. I felt, I'm going to rewrite that, Rachel. I uh. <laughs> felt sort of bad that I didn't, about myself, that I didn't stick with things, you know, I know that I, I was did different things. Dramatics, <laughs> and then I was taking guitar lessons and then I was taking ice skating yeah. lessons. And then I was, you know, like, I felt like I was doing all of these different mm -hmm. things and I didn't stick with anything. I'm rewriting that. Yeah. I, I feel like it, it's made me feel that I've explored life, you know, and, yeah. and lived a lot. I mean, I've done that many things in my life that when I explain to people, I've done this and that, and I feel like I've lived a million lives, but I love all of the bits, you know? Yes, some bits mm -hmm. are not so good, but I wouldn't change that I tried things and it didn't work out. Or I just love that I tried. And you learn something about yeah, yourself exactly, from every exactly. experience. Yeah, and there's different versions of me over the years, but they've all kind of come together and 
I think I'm just always evolving. And I, I, I even now as an adult, you know, recently, like I had to go rock climb and it was absolutely rubbish, but I had to go and I, you know, <laughs> I did it. And, you know, I would just do random things and I might only do it once, but I've done it. <laughs> so. Right. Right. Yeah. I, think, I think we're all human collages. Yeah. Of different experiences. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hard to explain sometimes because I'm like, why do this and that? Try this. But, but yeah, I, I like that I've done all the weird and wonderful that's awesome what is your favorite meal oh I would say my favorite would be pizza and pasta but I really have to not have so much gluten so <laughs> other, um, other than that I would say kind of like a Mexican rice dish with like veggies and I'm vegetarian that kind of thing awesome you know most people that I have asked that to on this podcast has said have said some version of Mexican or tacos. I think yeah, it's the I love, most popular. Yeah, I, I love kind of that type of food and um, you know, things you can hold with your hands and that mm -hmm. that's that I had Mexican last night actually. That's went out for a meal. Um but yeah, that's my that's one of my go to things as well. It's lovely. That's cool. Um all right, what one piece of advice would you like to give your younger self? to trust the process um have confidence and slow down and enjoy the journey it's a bit more than one piece but That's i think fine. i was so caught up in things that the i'll be happy when kind of scenario yeah. for quite some time that, that i didn't yeah. appreciate the now and, and and to be more present you know i'm yeah, definitely absolutely. trying to be more present in, in each day as well I love that. Enjoy the journey. That's it's so important. So important. Uh, what is one thing you would most like to change about the world? That we have a lot more peace, that there's not as much conflict. And I, I think just that, you know, we look after our planet more and the environment and that, yeah, peace. I, I, I you know, the news can be just so upsetting and, <laughs> you know, countries doing things to each other, people doing things to each other. I just wish for that for all of us really more mindful more peaceful yeah more connected and yeah. to keep our shared humanity at the top of mind and, and less focused on the digital world you know as well as so consumed and and you know i my son i think he's grown up I, I you know grew up with kind of not being in the social media i use in social media so much i i love it and use it for work but i'm not I wouldn't say I'm totally consumed by it, but I know like nieces and nephews and things, you know, they've grown up in high school and social media is so key and yeah, just to not be consumed and influenced so much yeah. by all of that. Even though it can be amazing, I, I think it impacts a lot of our mental health as well. And I, I worry absolutely. about that, like my son. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're, you're doing ex exactly the right thing to keep him as digitally free as possible yeah. until you can't avoid it. Yeah, anymore. exactly. Yeah. I try to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. What TV shows do you binge when you watch television? Oh, at the moment I've been um, watching um, the American office. I love it. Okay. Shit's Creek. That's been another thing. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but yeah, 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 absolutely. I'm watching I, I do love a bit of like comedy, you know, I, I, I like shows that um, I love things like Friends and Stranger Things and I will rewatch shows and I, I, like the American Office and Friends is something, it's a bit like a comfort blanket, you know, like having it on the background, I might be doing stuff, but I often can fall asleep <laughs> with things like that. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely love a lot of comedy and kind of um, silly kind of things. But then ultimately I can like, you know thrillers and, and things like that but I, I like quite confident shows I find the American office really anything that makes me laugh really I, I love to laugh I actually have a question have you seen the tv show Ted Lasso yes yes my partner I started watching that recently he got me watching it he said I've watched this show it's really good and we put it on and I love it because obviously you know someone from the U.S. coming to sure. England football team and I love that actor. I forget his name. Um, and it's oh, it's brilliant. It's so funny. And I've How just watched. How true it. is that to in representing British culture? It, um, it's quite true. I would say a lot of it. You know, the football fans and you know the kind of scenes in the pub and things like that. But not not totally. Right. Some bits are a little exaggerated or underplayed as well. Um, but you know the way we are with football as a as a culture, sure. I think it's quite well represented. And you know where you've got the kind of 
good looking footballers will be glamorous wise that's very <laughs> apparent in this country and um so I yeah it's great isn't it it's, it's brilliant and it I, I so actually wonderful. I was really tired watching season two so I need to re-watch it but um it's so good yeah it, and I love the fusion of kind of um you know the humor from the US and the UK humor and I think the characters just blend well together and they do it's, it's just really it's good isn't it? one of it, our favorite shows yeah. yeah and it's it's a real kind of feel-good show as well isn't it Absolutely. You know, it's funny but it's got emotion in it as well and that type of thing is what I love. I love that you've mentioned that. You need to, yeah. I need to watch, rewatch the end of season two again. I think season three is coming out sometime is it? soon. I'm not oh, exactly great. sure when. I know they had some production difficulties, but um, or delays of some sort. I'm not exactly sure when it's coming out, but it's definitely going to be the last one. Oh, okay. Because okay. the actor who plays Coach Beard is already committed to another project oh. when they would have filmed season season four so, right so, okay i think I, that's yeah. the, what i've read yeah um, but i wish it would go on forever oh, I, just, I know it's great isn't it so it's... uplifting and yeah positive and life affirming yeah yeah, yeah. it's great it's great yeah and i wanted to talk to some someone from the uk about it because i don't i don't know how consistent it is or yeah, are they yeah. making it all up or what no you know? definitely parts of it are like that and i think i mean i'm not particularly a big football fan a lot of my family are but you know people are so serious about it and it can you know i think a lot of that is represented on the show and the the different characters and like i said like the glamorous girlfriend and right. <laughs> quite funny um yeah yeah and kind of you know the 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 way it is in general I think they've done a good good job with it in like a you know obviously it's very humorous as well and it's it's great that's cool well thank you so much Rachel this was delightful I appreciate oh, thank you. you staying up late oh the time it's okay. difference and... now I feel actually really awake and I think the house is so quiet it's been quite chill thank you I've loved talking <laughs> to you and you have the best questions ever oh thanks well I got them out of your book really <laughs> yeah. they literally were all out of your book oh, so. and I love the bits that you noted down as well and um I think obviously because I'm fairly new to promote my book and things it, it's just nice hearing what you took from the book and and yeah it's it's lovely to hear so thank you it's going to be a permanent part of my collection oh thank you so much thank, thank you. you for being here it was wonderful oh thank you thanks a lot and thanks for having me my pleasure okay don't go anywhere hi I'm so excited to share with you the new permission to heal bookshop on bookshop.org we all know how important it is to support our local and independent bookshops, and I've created a podcast dedicated bookshop on bookshop.org. So just follow along with me at Permission to Heal Bookshop on bookshop.org. Uh, the link will be attached to the post, and you can have access to the entire catalog of books by my expert guests. You can just click and order from the independent bookshops and and support everyone. It's pretty awesome. Um, I've also put a, a bookshelf with my own permission to land books on it and all sorts of books for inspirational help and books that I love. So join me on bookshop.org. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Permission to Heal. I hope you found it moving and inspirational. Please remember, you don't need anyone else's permission to trust and follow your heart you have the power within you. Subscribe to Permission to Heal so you don't miss any new episodes, and please share this with your friends.